You're watching the Wellness Hour news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with dental implants. According to my first guest, he says nobody should be wearing a loose fitting denture. We're talking about getting a brand new upper and lower set of teeth supported by dental implants. And with us, we have Virginia's go-to implant dentist, Dr. Niels Ostebem. Dr. Ostebem, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me, Randy. I'm very excited to be here. And you can just call me Dr. O. All uh, my patients call me Dr. O. Okay, good. And you brought a lot of photos. So yes. we'll get to as many of those as possible. Now, for people that don't know your practice, like who's the typical implant patient, dental implant patient? So we kind of have two groups of implant patients that come to see us. Okay. Uh, there's the one group of patients that is in a, kind of like in a, I think a lot of people have experienced this. You get the root canal, you get the redo root canal, you get a, another crown, another crown here and there, but because their biggest fear is they don't want to get the denture. Like they really don't want to get a denture. So they keep patching, 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 patching. And for those people, we can give them fixed upper and lower teeth in as little as two visits. And the second group of patients is denture wearers. They've had dentures for five, 10, 15, 20 years. Okay. And they've just kind of given up. They, they hate their dentures. Most of them don't wear it. And, and they, didn't, they never show up because they don't know what options they have. And that's the people that we really can help the most because they've, they've, they're living a miserable life. And in a, few, in a few visits, we can have them smiling, eating, chewing the food they want again. Now you said that on the day of the procedure, yes. a denture wearer or somebody without teeth can walk in with no teeth and walk out with upper and lower teeth that don't come out. Absolutely, Randy. And you print them digitally in the other room. Yes. Is I that right? A, yeah, we have a, uh, a full, full service in-house lab. We have a dedicated lab tech, so you can help customize your smile to however you want it to look. Um, and that's how we can do it so fast. Okay, now you have been in dentistry since you were about 10 years old. Right? Eh, my dad would probably say that. I used to tell about my dad's dental clinic, but yes. Is that right? So yes. it's in your blood. Yes. And you like it. You know, I, I said that you speak with a lot of enthusiasm and high yes. volume. And, you, and this was off camera. You go, it's because I love dentistry. Yes, I absolutely love dentistry. That's interesting. And I love to, I love to help people. Like I love to change people's lives. Okay. And this implant dentistry part is a, has been a journey for me the last 12, 13 years. And now we have a process that gives people teeth in as few as two to three visits. They can eat the foods they want. They can live the life they want. It's like a new start to life for them. And when you hear all my patients' stories, that's what makes me excited. We in the went moment. on your website. I looked at some of the videos. Yes. And these patients, I guess some of them were told their only option was a denture. Yeah, absolutely. And now they have new teeth. We, we hear it every right? single, yes, we hear it every single day. People come in and says, I was told I need a denture, but, but I really don't want the denture. What are my options? And they, they literally think they only have a denture as the, as the only option. And with our advanced imaging technology, 3D CAT scans, we have three face scanners, we can work everything up digitally. There's, as I used to tell my patients, if okay. you can literally drive to my office and you can walk or wobble in, we can get your implants. Is that right? Yeah. Getting brand new teeth supported by dental implants. Absolutely. Is this the future of dentistry, like dentures as we know them today? Because I said at the top of the show, no more dentures. So 20 years, 100 years, dentures won't exist as we know them. That, They'll all that be That is my goal. Something. My crusade is I want to get rid of. Nobody should have to suffer wearing a denture. Okay. Okay. Now, um, are there a lot of people in Virginia? that are either wearing a denture, headed to a denture? Yeah, there is, uh, in, just, if you just look at the amount of people that has an existing denture, you could take the largest stadium at Virginia Tech, that can be seats, it seats 66,000 people, and you could fill that more than 10 times with people just wearing dentures, just in the state of Virginia. Is that right? Yeah. Well, if it's so good getting, getting new teeth supported by mm -hmm. dental implants, why aren't they all doing it? What's your take? Um, there's like four or five reasons for that. Um, one of the reasons is, is um, People with dentures, existing dentures, they just don't know the options. They literally, they just don't show up at my clinic because they think there's no options. Okay. Um, there's also people because of cost, um, they think they need 28 implants, which is not true. It's, you know, it's, it, you don't need 28 implants, one for each tooth. Um, How many do you need? Um, four to six implants per arch. Okay. And uh, then there's another group of patients because of anxiety. So anxiety is a huge thing. That's why we're one of the only clinics that, that do IV sedation in our clinic. So that's not a, a factor anymore. You know, you, patients remember walking in and they remember walking out, but anything in between, they, you know, they have no idea what happened. Because I think of it as a painful procedure, but they're numbed up. They're, no, they're IV sedation, put to sleep okay. first, numbed up, we do the surgery. And it's very interesting, Randy. I hear time after time, my patients come back and tell me, you know, I took narcotic pain medication for like a day you know, two days, that was it. They were like, they've had teeth pulled and you know, if they were putting dentures, they remember all this pain and here they get teeth, you know, in one surgery and they're like, I thought it was gonna hurt way more and they're, they're surprised. 
Okay, good. They're eating. They're eating right away. But the dentures, you know, they have to hey, heal three, four months and they can't eat anything. How old can you, like, what's the upper range of age ranges of patients that can do this? So, Randy, that's a common misconception. Like, there is really, per se, no upper limit. Like, my oldest implant patient was 96 years old. Why would a 96-year-old want to do this? Well, I, I, you know, when he came in, I always asked all my patients, why are you here? Like, well, what's, what's your goals? And he told me, I want to eat pepperoni pizza. That is one That's thing nice. I want to do. And he asked me, can you do this for me? And I told him, absolutely. <laughs> so 96, I mean, the, the, those implants aren't more likely to fall out of a 96 year old? No, that, it, age has nothing to do with the long-term success rate of it, dental implants. As long as you're healthy enough to come into my clinic, then normally we can help you. So when we were treating this patient, when we were finally done, he'd been talking about pepperoni pizza throughout this whole procedure here. <laughs> okay. And we literally told him, hey, you know, if you hold on and wait 20 minutes, I'm gonna have my staff member run down and we're gonna buy you a pepperoni pizza and I want to see your first bite. <laughs> and he just, he literally just looked at me and he said, don't worry about it. My daughter, because you know, he's older, his daughter took him to his appointment. She's in the car waiting with my pizza. I'm gonna eat it as soon as I get out this door, I'm gonna have my pepperoni pizza. I mean, but they have to take it easy at the beginning, right? Before they start eating. You can, you can, you can be in a softer diet food, but pizza is one of those foods. You don't want to go out and chewing on necessarily nuts the first, you know, few months of healing period of time. But it's not like we ask our patients to be in a liquid diet. You know, you can eat most but, foods. Okay, but, but when, when it's all healed up, yeah. uh, I mean, they can eat like steak or yeah, of course. Like corn when on the cob, done, or they have to be careful with their front teeth. He can, he can eat corn on the cob, you know, salads, chew on an apple, you know, bite into an apple, whatever you really want to do. Now, but if you're wearing a denture for like 20 years. Yes. I guess you can't do this because you don't have enough bone. That's a very, very common misconception. And I hear it every single day. So I think there's, there's two, two issues here at hand. The one issue is some people tend to self-diagnose themselves. They're like, I'm too old, you know, I've had dentures for too long, you know, uh, you know I've got diabetes, I can't get implants. So that's kind of the one group. And then there's the other group who, whose dentist tells them, oh, you, can, you know, either doesn't tell them about implants and tell them you can't get implants because you don't have enough bone. And it's incredibly rare that we can't give patients dental implants. So if somebody's wearing a denture for 10 or 15 years. 50 years. Is it because of the new technology that allows you to, yes. to do we it, have, make it we happen? We have new 3D CAT scans. We have new types of implants. Um, we have new surgical techniques, bone rebuilding techniques. As long as, as, as you're willing to go through this process, we can give pretty much anybody teeth again okay. that stays in and doesn't come out and that allows you you know to eat kiss play tennis you know enjoy the life the way you're supposed to do interesting now correct me if i'm wrong here yes. so the way dental implant dentistry is typically done is you go to one place where they do the surgery another place where they put the teeth on top and then you get them cleaned elsewhere you do all three parts right there is that why you do it so quickly uh, yes, we do everything. I'm kind of like the guy that, that does the surgical part. I do the prosthetic part together with my lab tech. That's the putting the teeth on there. Putting the teeth on there, okay. and then all the maintenance stuff is happening at my office too. Um, that's one of the reasons why we can keep the cost down for patients to make it more affordable. We also make the process so fast, but also very, very importantly, when my patients come into my clinic, they're not necessarily looking for dental implants. They want to get teeth. Okay. They're worried about okay. smiling and chewing and laughing and kissing and all those good things. So. The problem with that is if you don't place your implants in the correct position, that's going to affect the outcome of your teeth. So when I, that's why it's important for me that I'm doing both the, the tooth part, but also the surgical part. So I can place the implant in a way that I can give you the smile and the form and the function. Do that they you look need. real? I mean, do the teeth look real? Absolutely. I can show you tons of cases where most of the times dentists can't even tell us not though. Let's take a look teeth. at one of these. Sure. Wow. Now, is that unusual to have teeth that bad? Absolutely not. This is uh, Brooke. He was in a, in a car accident in his 20s. And from then, it just started the bad spiral. You know, he got the, the, the root canals, the crown, the redo root canal, the redo crown, you know, all the nickel and diming, you know. Yeah. And now he's at this point here where he's trying to grow a big beard because he doesn't want to show his teeth because he is, he, is, he is embarrassed about his smile and he can't chew the food he wants to eat. So his option at this point was either a denture or he could get implants with fixed teeth up and top and bottom. Okay. And that's what he luckily, you know, chose because All he right. came to see me. Let's take a look. Yeah. So you can see this here is him literally, and I want to tell you this. Wow. This is him two weeks after surgery. This is him wearing his temporary teeth. This is not even his finals. Two weeks but later, they he don't looks come like this. out. They don't come out. They stay in there fixed. He can chew and, and eat and enjoy life, but it's only two weeks later. It looks like completely a different guy. You can't even tell him. Do you see how his teeth now follow the lower lip? You can tell he looks healthier, happier. You know, he looks younger. Randy, which one of those two pictures, it, which guy looks the most handsome to you? What's well, true? With the, the good teeth, he yeah. looks more handsome. Yeah. Doesn't he also look younger? 
When it does green, look, yeah, and more sophisticated. More you were sophisticated, telling me this stuff in the green more room. More educated, you know? It sounded it's like a, you this, were... This is a guy, if you met him on the street, you see that big smile, you want to go talk with him. You're going to go up and say, hey, how are you doing? Can you give me directions? Are you going to go ask directions from that guy? That's true. He looks like a mean guy, it's but he's not. Video. He's not. He is the nicest guy you will ever meet. Is that him over there? Yeah, that's him. This is actually... So he's holding his before. This is actually oh, this three is... years later. This is the same guy three years later. What's it like when a guy like this sees his face in the mirror for the first time? It's, it's a very emotional experience, like for my patients. There's a, a lot of tears, um, especially with him. I remember his wife ecstatic about his assault. Like she finally got her husband back. Like she told me, I have my husband back. What do they like more? What they can eat or the way it looks? It's very interesting. You know, there's certain stereotypes. So most of my male patients come in and their primary thing is they want to eat, you know, steak, you know, they want to be able to chew the food that they can't chew anymore or eat anymore. Okay. And then there's other groups, the females, most of them, they're mainly worried about aesthetics. They're like, yeah, if I can chew, it's fine, but I really want to look great. I want to look a little bit younger. You know, I want to have that great smile I see in all the magazines. Uh, but it's very, very interesting, Randy. When patients are done, it's like, it, it flip-flops, you know, because you quickly forget you, what you don't know, you don't know. And patients that just want cosmetics, when they all of a sudden start chewing that steak for the first time, or they have that salad, you know, you haven't had salad for a long time, you haven't chewed corn on the cob, they come back in and they're like, wow, this is amazing. I can chew all the food I want to get. And the same thing with the guy, like, you know, Brooke, like all of a sudden he's getting compliments. People are like, he wanted to chew, but people are giving him compliments. You know, walking into my clinic, he's like, you know, one of the other patients complimented how nice my teeth looks. He's out in public, you know, at a bar. They're like, so you have a nice probably, smile, sir. So he's probably doing uh, selfies on Facebook. Absolutely. Like he's like, look at my teeth. It looks great. Now I have to bring this up because insurance, even the best dental insurance doesn't really cover this. Medicare. Medicaid doesn't cover this. But Randy, like people finance this all over the country. We have people at my clinic dedicated to just uh, the financing process for this. So you have payment plans? We have payment plans, yes. And we have different outside external financing companies that finance people every single day, hundreds of patients every day. So you have to get, you have to have decent credit, a little bit of credit. You have to have a little bit of credit to get, a, to get, to get the, the financing to secure, you know, your, this process. But it makes it affordable for everybody to do it. Yeah, you can spread the payments out over several years and then it's just like having a, you know, like a payment each month. Now a guy like this, back to this mm -hmm. guy, they're IV sedated and you say they have very little memory. Like yeah, they don't they, really remember. Correct. They, they lose walk, track of time. They, they remember walking into the clinic, and then we give them drugs as amnesia, so they don't remember what happens, and then they remember walking out of the clinic. But anything in between, you know, doing the surgery part, we don't really want them to remember, because who wants to remember that? Like, nice. that's kind of, you know, barbaric to do that. Randy, let me show you this next patient. All this right. is one of my absolute favorite patients. This is Tara. Okay. She um, has always, if, in her own words, always had bad teeth. Um, she's had the, you know, the root canal, redo root canal, redo crown, and everything's just worn down on her. If you look at her smile right now, you could tell how her teeth are worn flat, um, not very aesthetically looking outcomes she has at this point. She's very frustrated. She can't eat the food she wants. And she came to me because she doesn't want to have a denture. And that's the option is denture or we go do something else. That's uh, young to be wearing a denture. Yeah, she's uh, at this point here when we started this process, she's like late 30s. Okay. It's very young for a Who wants to have a denture in their 30s? Nobody should ever have a denture in their 30s. Okay. Um, so we gave her options. And this is one of the strengths at my clinic because we're multiple dentists at my clinic. That's kind of like, you know, two places you can get this done. You can go to a place that only does implants and you can go to a place that does implants. Me, but we also have other dentists that I employ because not everybody needs implants. Sometimes it's better to save the teeth and do what's called a, a, a full mouth rehabilitation where you basically put crowns on all the teeth to, make the, to give them the smile that they want. Okay. So with her, her option was a denture and you saved her teeth? Yes. Okay. Yes. We, we ended up saving her teeth. You can see here. This is her with my wife, Dr. Amber. Look at them here side by side. You can see in the picture before, you can see her edges of her teeth are worn down. They are, they're mismatched. Makes her look older with Makes those flat teeth. Makes her look older, okay. less educated. But wouldn't you agree on, on, if you look at the after picture, that she looks more attractive? Yes. And that happens to everybody. Like, smile, people. The thing is, this is a very important point. You hear people say, you know, um, teeth doesn't really matter, you know, a smile, whatever. But that's only people without, with teeth, with good teeth that say that. Like if you look at, the, for instance, Men's Health, um, they surveyed their, their people there and they said the number one thing they look at in the partner is a smile. Okay. So don't just take my word for it. Just about every survey. That's, that, Pretty that much any survey, like it. smile is top one, two, or three. She does look better Yeah. with those new teeth. Younger too. Do you want to think she looks younger? She does look younger. But she's younger. really four years older. And you saved her teeth. We so saved your teeth. wife is a dentist. Yes. So she does 
Uh, so you do the implant, the surgery, implant those kinds of things. Implant is kind of my area. But when you could save teeth, she'll, she'll take over. Yeah, she focuses on all the big full mouth rehabilitation, case, like uh, aesthetic cases, veneers, kind of bridge. Do you go home and talk about dentistry all the time? All the time. You do? All the time. So I know you have a couple of kids. Yeah. We have, we have is she kids. like you? Is she as passionate about this as you are? Yes, absolutely. We both <laughs> love going to work every day. Because the thing is, like, <laughs> I, help, I help change people's lives with implants and surgeries when we can't save the teeth. She helps transform this beautiful young lady's life and smile with regular dentistry, crown and bridge, you know, a few root canals. But look at the difference. Now, now, she transformed this just like I do it. But, but that's the thing is, especially on young patients, sometimes implants are not always the best option. And that's why if, my dad has a saying. Okay. My dad has a saying that says, if you give a guy a hammer, he's going to use a hammer. If you go to a place that only does implants, what's the odd treatment option? They're only going to suggest implants. Okay. That's one of our four tastes that we've split it out. So everybody kind of has the little expert area. And we get, we get consults every week from like some of those big implant centers from young people. You said you're less, less expensive. We're less expensive, but also we a lot of times end up telling the patient, you don't need implants at this point. You're in your 20s, you, okay. they're gonna pull all these teeth on you. And, and really you just need regular dentistry to give you the smile you want. You need cosmetic dentistry. Great, we send it to my wife, Dr. Amos, she takes it from there. Okay, that photo, is that her right there too? Yeah, that's uh, this is Tara before and after. So she's holding her before teeth. Right yes. in her hand. She's holding her before teeth, and right after that, we took it out of the frame and she pulled it in two pieces because the bad old teeth is gone and her new reset is, 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 is here. That's nice. Yeah. And then everybody you say wishes they would have done it earlier. 100%. Every single patient tell me the same thing. They wish they could go back in time and tell themselves, just, you know, just go in there and just get started. And the thing is, if you think about it, okay. what do you have to lose? What do you really have to lose? Now, what if you have bad gums though? I mean, if you have gum disease, yes. are your gums too bad to do this, to get implants in there? Absolutely not. One of our, our biggest group of patients actually comes to us because they have loose teeth. Like, you know, they- So they have gum disease. They have active gum disease. And, and now it's gotten to a point where the bone has gone away. So now their teeth are flailing everywhere. You know, their teeth are flailing out and their smile looks terrible and they can't chew any food because every time they chew, their teeth are moving. That's one of the, the big, big group of patients we get in that, that is very, very easily helped. Okay, good. Time for more photos. Okay. So this here is, is Kelly. Kelly has a rare hereditary condition where her adult teeth are not formed correctly. So she's basically always just lived with this. Um, and she's just tried the way of like, of like basically patchworking her teeth because she didn't want to get the denture. And she didn't realize that these implants were an option for her. Okay. So she just kept patching and patching and patching, but eventually, you know, the, some of the teeth had to come out and now she's here. And she's like, okay, Dr. O, are you ready to give me a denture? And I'm like, absolutely not. We're not giving you a denture. <laughs> okay. That's the last thing I want to do. Okay. Um, for her, we gave her a set of teeth that doesn't come, out, come in and out. They stay in and she can now eat the food she wants to. Let's she's, take a look at that after. Look at this. This is her with her uh, teeth right before she tears her photo apart. Looking you know? good, looking good. Looking good, you can see younger, more vibrant. Um, and you can go to my website, you can see her, she has a great testimonial of her. So you have a lot of videos, Yes, I guess, of yes. showing these people's stories of, yeah. of what they The transformation and how it affected and transformed their life. And how now she is not afraid to smile anymore, not afraid to go up to talk with people. You know, it, it really had a big impact on her life. Do you think people with bad teeth are judged? Absolutely. Like everybody knows, you know, Hollywood, you look at all the Hollywood movies, the, the person that has the bad teeth is always the bad guy. They have crooked teeth, gray <laughs> teeth, dark, they're missing a tooth. You want to make somebody look uneducated, they pull a tooth. You know, they okay. make the tooth dark. Like it, it, it's uh, or like it's, at Halloween, they've got the, Exactly. Yeah, they got the, the paint teeth. you put on, a buck teeth. Yeah, it, 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 it's, okay. it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a stereotype that, that unfortunately exists, but it's real. Did they tell you that they feel judged by people? Like that they're unclean or they don't brush their teeth? Yeah, absolutely. These patients come in and, and they're afraid to smile because they feel like people are staring at them. But it also, it's not just like for that, it also affects like more of your whole life. Like there's a study out of Denmark. You know, Denmark okay. is the happiest country in the world. And All there's right. actually, one of my friends did a study. He was an orthodontist there. He did a study. They actually sent patients out for job interviews and they all had beautiful, it was dental students. They all had beautiful teeth. And then they came back the same day and then they gave them fake kind of snab on teeth and now they were, they were, not, they were just uh, crooked, crooked teeth. And they sent them out for the same job interview. And guess what? There was an, more than two times higher chance of getting the job if they had straight teeth versus crooked teeth. What do you think that is? Why do you think that is? Because people, time after time again, in surveys rate, 
you smile as one of the top one, two, three things. You look more approachable. You know, you look nicer. Like, who are you going to talk? If, Randy, if you are on the street and you have to ask for, for directions, yeah. are you going to go over the grumpy guy that over in the corner? Are you going to go for the for the guy that's smiling at you? That's and, true. You know, that's true. You know, it's just... Makes you more approachable, exactly. I guess. Exactly. And it looks you more likable. You look more educated. You know, that's why these people are getting hired. Do you ever, like, you're ever hearing, like, let's say you're on a concert. Yes. And you're hearing their hard luck bad teeth stories that you probably hear all the time. Do you ever like get excited thinking they, they don't even know how good this is going to be? Yeah, and that happens a lot more than you realize. And I feel kind of a little bad about this because they're sitting there telling me about the hardship and I'm inside I'm like, okay, this is what I do. And this is what I know I can <laughs> fix, you know. I'm like right there, I just have to pay, have the patient to accept and move forward. And in a few weeks, that can be the first day in the rest of their life. Let me show you this next all patient. Right. This is a George. He actually came in kind of like a very typical patient. He came in, he complained about tooth pain. He said, it hurts right up here. And I looked in his mouth and I was like, I think you got more stuff going on. So he took a CAT scan. His other dentist didn't have a CAT scan. He took a CAT scan, a 3D image, and I could see he had multiple failing root canals. And I told him, you know, does it hurt here? Does it hurt here? Does it hurt here? He's like, yeah, it kind of hurts there, then there. But he's just used to that. You know, you piecemeal it kind of together. And started talking with him and he realized that really the best option for him at this point was a full set of teeth that does not come out, come in and out. We did his top teeth. His bottom teeth are fine. We did his top teeth. And in the process, now he can chew everything. We also fixed, you can see he had that underbite, kind of almost that yeah. bulldog look. He had yeah. that, yeah. that look. We fixed that. You can see here. Look how he's smiling. Like, he's a brand new smile. Looks good. Yeah. I mean, look at him. You can see here, this is him and me together. Wouldn't you agree that he looks at that picture younger? Yeah. Happier? And he would have ended up in a denture. He would have had a denture, yes. And uh, We saved him from the dentures. So that, that's our goal. We want to save people from dentures. No more dentures. So no more dentures. No more dentures. Do they get to see you on some of these consults? Yes. Basically, the way it works is all my patients come in for an implant consult. Um, we do the CT scan. They talk about implant coordinator. And then I come in and answer any questions to kind of go over the options that they have. Okay. And you act just like this? Very excited. Just like this because I know. <laughs> you love it. I know that I can help them. And I know when they're done, they're going to be one of my best patients afterwards because they're so excited because I'm the guy who helped them. Okay, good. Now you say that, and we talk about this, it's not necessarily you that's changing their lives, they're changing their lives. Can yes, you elaborate think, on that? I think that's very important. I told you that before the, the interview here. Um, I don't want to take all the credit for this because really these patients are the one that's scheduling online or taking the first initiative to actually call and get the ball rolling. Like they're sitting at home, they've waited 10, 15, 20 years sometimes, and they're just afraid to get started. And it takes a lot of guts to do that. I am just part of the process. I'm the facilitator. Okay. And then once I'm done, it's, it's their job then to take it from there and enjoy the rest of their life. And then they uh, and then they maintain them just like regular teeth. They just come in for cleaning. Yeah, they clean and brush them. They come in every three to six months. We have a we have a special protocol uh, for people with full arches. We have a special machines in Switzerland. They come in there. We use it to clean their their teeth with. Now I'm not trying to side with you. People need to know it's a real interview. And uh -huh. so you're, I'm just asking the questions here. But would you say that the way you're doing it with your in-house laboratory, where you make the teeth literally, you you have a printer that prints the teeth. Digitally. Printer, a milling machine. Yeah, got, we got it all. Would you say that's very unique in the state where you, I mean, less than 1% of dentists have this setup? Yeah, it's a, it's a very unique situation. First of all, it requires a ton of training. So it has, you have to have a lot of experience to do this because you're not just now the dentist. You also have to know the lab part. Okay. And also it's a big investment. So if you have somebody that has an in-house lab, you know they have a lot of experience. They're doing a lot of cases. That's the place you want to go to okay. because you're not going to have this unless you're the go-to guy. I want to ask you, because we talked a lot yes. about full arch of teeth, upper and lower, yes. supported by implants that don't come out. Big trend, especially online, of these snap-in dentures. Yeah. And we've talked a little bit about it. You're not a big fan of those. You don't like the snap-in dentures. Yeah. Why is that? And that's kind of two reasons. Um, one of the reasons is that patients don't really want snapping dentures. They want teeth. They want teeth that stay in, that they can they okay. can eat the foods with. They can eat the corn on the cob. You can't really do that with snapping dentures. And then the, there's, uh, there's the other problem is there's a lot more maintenance with these. They break more often. There's more cost over time. And then people start feeling like we're niggling and diming them because they have to come in for all these follow-up things. And it takes a lot longer. It's not like same-day okay. teeth. 
Is that more for the new dentists to start out? They're doing a lot of the snap-ins? Yeah, because it's also easier to do. So a lot of the new dentists are doing that because it's a good way to get started. I used to do that like 10 years ago, but I've kind of moved away from this because, because it's just, there's better treatment options available now. And with the new okay. technology and the in-house lab, we've been able to reduce our prices so more people can afford the better options. But you will, I mean, there are certain cases where you may do a snap-in. Yes, there teeth. are certain cases where, so Randy, I treat my patients like I treat my own family, and I really strongly believe in this. Okay. And I love my family, as you can probably tell. Okay, okay. Um, and I feel like I want to present the patient with the treatment options that is the best for the patient. And if there's a unique situation where this is the best option, it's in the patient's best interest, of course I'm going to tell them that, because we do it all. Okay. And then, uh, do they ever, now, now, do they ever call you and say, hey, can I eat this or can I eat that? Are they worried at the beginning of eating something like chewy or tough? Yes, they're, they're worried about that, but that's, a, that's a, the biggest drawback also of like the snap-in, snap-out dentures, because you can't eat anything with those. Because there are certain limitations you have there. That's why we really want everybody to get the fixed teeth. Can you eat like things like popcorn or like, like with, almonds? With, with fixed with, teeth that yes. go in on implants? Absolutely. You can eat uh, almonds, nuts, popcorn, salad, pasta al dente, you know, you name it. Steak. You know, we joked about this, that the most expensive part about this is going out to eat all the time. Mm -hmm. Do they tend to do that more? Absolutely, because they're staying at home before because they don't want to have to go to the restaurant and the first thing you go, all your friends are there, you look at a menu and you start saying no, 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 no to all the things you can't eat. In and front of your friends. That's basically what you're forced to do if you have dentures. They don't want to do that. They want to eat the food they want to eat and they want to be comfortable in front of their friends. So all of a sudden now they're like, yes, let's go out for dinner. Let's go have fun. <laughs> you know, let's live life. They're not going to hide at home because they have to cut their steak in 55 pieces because, you know, your stomach doesn't have teeth. Okay. You need, you need teeth here to chew your food, not your stomach. So we're out of time. Yes. Final message mm -hmm. to the two groups of patients. They're either currently wearing a denture. Yes. Or maybe they feel like they're ending, they're headed to a denture. Uh -huh. They've heard what you have to say, but they're still skeptical or afraid or worried about pain or whatever. What do you say to them? I invite them in. I want them to come in and meet me, meet my clinic, meet my team. And at least they'll know the options because most patients don't. And you'll set up payment plans for them on set the consult as well? Set up payment plans, well. you know, and uh, take care of all their fears. Most of the, my patients' fears are just anxiety. And we have sedation. You know, they hear that, they're like, okay, I'm good to go. And it's safe, the sedation. You're monitoring what? It's very, very safe. It's monitored. I have a full-time registered nurse on staff that helps with it too. Like, we have a full setup. If like blood pressure? Blood like their pressure. vital signs? Yeah, yeah. Blood pressure, EKG, um, heart rhythm, like blood pressure, you know, pulse oximetry. We have a full setup. We, we've been doing well, it for 12 years. you have type 2 diabetes or you're on blood thinners, can you still do it? Absolutely. You'll work with their medical doctor in Absolutely. We're working with the medical doctors in certain cases to get clearances, to adjust the medications. Uh, here, here's, here's the kicker, Randy. A lot of medical doctors don't know a lot about implants. So they might go to the doctor and say, you can't get dental implants because you got diabetes, which is absolutely not true. We just work with the patient on the medication side with the doctor, educate them, and, and then we get the work done. Okay, good. So no more dentures. No more dentures. Okay, so if they want to make an appointment, do they go online or just call your practice? They can choose. They can, they can go uh, call my practice or they can go online. If you're sitting at home watching this now, now and it's 10 o'clock at night, go to my website. Make the appointment. Make the first step to get your transformation, to get you reset. Okay. Dr. O, thank you for coming on the show. Great stuff. Thank you. You've been watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. For now, I wish you good health.